story time. I took that picture in July of 2000. A year later, when everything happened, I didn't know anywhere near what I knew now. The first thing I thought when I heard about it is, like, they fucked up my skyline. And I even remember getting swept up in a little bit of the jingoism, and I just didn't know what was about to happen. Among many other things, I didn't know that we lost three buildings from the World Trade Center complex on that day. Uh, building 7 is very rarely ever mentioned. Anyway, without saying too much, I now know that that was the beginning of one of the darker periods in our history. It opened the door for the Patriot Act, which they had ready to go like a month later, after which we have had, relatively speaking, unlimited military engagements, bellicosity all across the world, an expansion and an increase every single year under every single administration of the military spending budget, which is already more than like what, the next nine other countries put together. Friends, I don't talk so much shit about this country or just about like how fucked up stuff is in general because I've always known, right? Like I didn't learn a lot of this stuff until relatively recently, but I know this. All the information is at your fingertips to find out just how much of the evil that is happening in this world is a direct result of the country in which you currently sit and it's done in our names. And the more we let things continue without fighting back harder than we have been doing, without doing more, without stopping the belief that just voting every one or two or four years is actually going to stop these criminals from continuing to do what they did in Iraq and Afghanistan and in Yemen and the world over. Like, we got to stop them. And as the conversation goes on about like the proximity of cishet Christian black men and how their proximity to like the top of the pile causes them to look away from shit and to be complicit in shit. Like us as Americans, we do that every day in one way or another, whether it's looking away from the prison population or from any one of the numerous military engagements or spy activities or whatever the fuck our country is doing. Again, in our names. The other 9-11 in 1973, in which the CIA, our intelligence apparatus, uh, installed a brutal dictator in Chile. Like, we literally destroy country after country. Like, since the CIA's inception, I believe one of their very first actions was getting rid of Mohammed Mossadegh, who was in Iran. Iran at the time, would, like you couldn't tell the difference between if you were looking at Iran or if you were looking at like some Euro cosmopolitan European country. And obviously there's problems there, but like, just follow me for it. I have a podcast episode about how The Handmaid's Tale is basically like our fear of happening here. What happened to women in Iran? Anyway, the 9-11 in 1973 says a lot more about our country than the one in 2001. When you hear people who you call radicals talking about how voting doesn't matter or like that both parties are complicit and you get mad and your knee-jerk response is to be like, well, there's a difference and blah, 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 and like point out the good things the Democrats have done. Like, I need you to stop yourself. And understand that whatever we do at the ballot box, the rest of the year, all of this stuff is going on, largely without our knowledge, but in our names. And there's a thing about abusers, and I consider our relationship with our government to be basically one of an abuser. Abusers don't stop until they are stopped. I say this a lot. I don't know what is going to work, but I do know what will not work, and that is what we have been doing up till now. And we need way more of you to get involved in any way you can. The thing you should really never forget is that every day you live in a country that took one tragedy and turned it into millions. And until we stop it, it's on us.